Indian Tradition, Culture and Society. Module 1, Part 3. Ashram OR The Stages of Life. The average lifespan of an individual is considered to be 100 years and it is divided into four stages, each stage having a time span of 25 years. These four ashramas are 1. Brahmacharya Ashrama or the stage of studentship. This is the first stage of life. It is meant for acquiring knowledge, developing discipline and molding character. This stage starts with the ceremony called Upanayanama or investiture with the sacred thread. Now the person became a brahmacharina, leading a celibate and austere life as a student at the home of his teacher. 2. Brihasthashrama or the stage of householder. The stage starts at marriage when the student has completed his studentship and is ready to take up the duties and responsibilities of household life. In this stage the individual gets married, earns money and begets children. The individual pursues wealth, artha, and pleasure, karma, within the limits of the moral law, dharma. 3. Vanaprastha Sharma or the stage of retirement from active life, after discharging all the duties and obligations as a householder, the individual enters into the Vanaprastha stage. It consists of the third quarter of person's life. In this phase, after retiring from active life, the individual dedicates himself to a life of spiritual contemplation. He leaves his home and goes to the forest to become a hermit. 4. Sannyas Ashrama or the stage of renunciation of wandering mystic. This is the last stage of life. Now the individual leaves his hermitage and becomes a homeless wanderer, sannyasin, with all his earthly ties broken. The sannyasin aspires and acts to attain liberation only. Marriages in ancient India. Marriage or vivaha was a very important sanskara in ancient India. Marriage in ancient India had three main purposes. 1. Promotion of religion by performance of household sacrifices. 2. Progeny, happy afterlife of father and his ancestors and continuation of family line or cooler. 3. Riti of physical pleasures. 8. Forms of marriage. 1. Vrama Vivaha. This is considered to be the purest form of marriage. In this form of marriage the father of the bride offers his daughter to a man of character and learning. 2. Deva Vivaha. In the Deva form of marriage the father offers her daughter as a Dakshina sacrificial fee to a young priest who officiates the Yajna which is arranged by him. 3. Arsa Vivaha. In Arsa Vivaha father of the bride gives his daughter to the bridegroom after receiving a cow and a bull or two pairs of these animals from the bridegroom. 4. Prajapetya Vivaha. In this type of marriage, the father offers the girl to the bridegroom. But neither does he offer any dowry nor does he demand bride price. 5. Asura Vivaha. This is a form of marriage by purchase in which the bridegroom has to give money to the father or kinsman of the bride. 6. Gandharva Vivaha. This was a marriage by consent of the boy and the girl. Mutual love and consent of the bride and bridegroom was the only condition required to bring about the union. 7. Rakshasa Vivaha. This was marriage by capture in which the girl was forcibly abducted from her home, crying and weeping and her kinsmen have been stained and their houses broken. 8. Pashacha Vivaha. Pashacha form of marriage is one in which the man seduces by force a girl who is sleeping or intoxicated or mentally disordered. Understanding gender as a social category. Representation of women in historical tradition. Understanding gender as a social category. 1. The early Vedic or the Rig Vedic period, 1500 BC, 1000 BC. Women were dignified with a respectable status in early Vedic civilization. Women were honored as well as empowered in the affairs of the home and family. They were also honored by their participation in all the socio-cultural activities of early Indian civilization. Women's freedom to participate in war, gymnastics, archery, horse riding, public activities, education, decision making. And in the selection of male partners has portrayed the nature of women's status in the social canvas of the Rig Vedic period. 
The value of women in the respect shown towards them was not only limited to the idea of mistress of the household. Rather, women demonstrated huge potential for contributing to human civilization during the Vedic period. The Rig Veda Sanhita text revealed that the goddess Durga, Aditi, the goddess of freedom, and Saraswati, the best mother, best of rivers, best of goddesses, were worshipped with complete dedication. Sculptures representing early Vedic society have also shown that women were placed in a higher status in this society. 2. The epoch or later Vedic period, 1000 BC 600 BC. Womanhood was idealized as an honorable position both in and outside the home during the epoch period of Indian civilization. The two great epochs of India, the Ramayana by Valmiki and the Mahabharat by Krishna Dvaipayana. Vyasa, depicted women as the root of dharma, pleasure, and prosperity. The Ramayana emphasized the line, Sita's noble life. Moreover, Sita, Draupadi, Kaiki, Rukmini, Savitri, and Satyabhama symbolized the great value, strong willpower, and the courageous role in position of women in epic society. 3. The Jainism and Buddhism period, 600 BC-200 BC. The existence of a persistent gender equity was observed during the period of Jainism and Buddhism. In the Tipitaka, the Vamana Vattu Pali section of the Kuddaka Nikai portrays women's freedom in education and religious and cultural activities in society. During this period, the various Indian cultures were united by a common culture, of which the Aryans were the original founders but to which Dravidians and others also made their contributions. 4. The Age of Dharma Sastras, Manusmriti, 200 BC 647 AD. Women's right to education was fully withdrawn with Manus codification of the laws governing society. During the Age of Dharma Sastras, the rules of right conduct Manusmriti, a number of problems started to creep in with the introduction of various restrictions on women's ability to obtain an education. Problems faced by women in ancient India. 1. Sati. Let these women, whose husbands are worthy and are living, enter the house with ghee applied, as corelium to their eyes. Let these wives first step into the pyre, tearless without any affliction and well adorned. Rig Veda. On her husband's death, the widow should observe celibacy or should ascend the funeral. Pyre after him. 2. Cutting off the ears and nose of wives. Aryan husbands cut off the ears and nose of their wives if they left the house without their prior permission. 3. Death penalty. The death penalty was prescribed for Aryan women. Guilty of infidelity. Manu SMRTI says, when a woman deceives her husband with another man, then the king should ensure that she be torn apart by dogs in a public place and the evil man should be burnt in a bed of red-hot iron. Infidelity to husband was considered a grave sin and it was believed that such women went to hell. The husband had the power to curse the wife who was disloyal to him. 4. No property rights. Women and sudras in ancient India have no property rights. 5. Dressing Aryan women had to wear a face veil when going out. They were not supposed to entertain strangers. 6. No education for women. Women and sudras were declared to be unfit for study of the Vedas. 7. Less representation in administration. Slavery in ancient India. The term that is most often used to refer to a slave in ancient Indian texts is Dasa. This term may have been derived from the word, das, which means to finish or terminate something. It was associated with slaves because their work was to finish various jobs. During the Rig Vedic period, the word dasa did not have the same connotation. Here, it meant people belonging to another group, possibly distinguished from the Aryas on the basis of their phenotypic features. However, the term was used to denote a slave by the later Vedic age. The Sas were not kin of their masters but often, women slave captured during wars were expected to deliver children. 
who would make up for the lives lost during the war. Another group of slaves was also present which could have included those who had migrated to the region of Indus. Wali along with their masters. Slaves were considered to be some form of objects and there were instances where they were listed as gift items. Their work was primarily associated with domestic chores but they could also be used as helpers for agriculture. Those who worked on fields were known as Dasa Karmakaras. A lot of the slaves were from the Shudra community but slaves from other Varnas including Brahmana and Kshatriya were present. The Athashastra from the period of the Mauryan Empire had more complexities in the concept of slavery. Slavery had become a well-established and accepted institution. During this period, there was no distinct social group which was by nature considered to be that of slaves. Instead, Slavery was mainly a result of economic factors. Defaulting on a payment during the time of famine for example would be overcome by becoming a slave to the creditor till the dues were paid. A story from the Jatakas where a master ties up a boy slave and a girl slave and then beats them to the extent which causes their skin to cut and bleed. According to scholars, reflects the prevailing early historic period attitude towards slavery. This is end of module 1. Hope you like this video if so please hit the subscribe button down there. Also like this video and share with others.